They say that when we die, we relive our entire life in the span of seven minutes. Now I'm sure for the most of us, these would be happy memories of ourselves surrounded by family or loved ones. But for animals, this will never be the case. As they die, their last seven minutes will be filled with violent memories of their habitats being destroyed and their families lost. Welcome to the reality of climate change. Hi, I'm Swara Patel and I'm a sophomore here at Carrollwood Day School. I have had my own struggles with the anxiety about the future of our planet. And we oftentimes hear about climate change in ways more harmful than helpful. And the toll that it takes on our mental health is often overlooked. Over the course of the next few minutes, I want to share why these feelings matter and more importantly, how we can channel them into meaningful action. This is a conversation we all need to have because whether we realize it or not, we are living through a climate crisis. According to a 2021 survey done by The Lancet, 59% of young adults aged 16 to 25 across 10 countries reported feeling very or extremely worried about climate change. These feelings were often accompanied with a sense of helplessness or fear about what the future of our planet has to hold. Now, I'll be honest with you. When I heard about climate change for the first time, I was terrified. I honestly thought that one day I'd wake up and there would be no water left, or my favorite species of animal would be extinct by 2050. I honestly thought we would be plunged into a dystopian-like society and I would have no idea what to do about it. I was even more shocked to learn that this dilemma we were in was one of our own doing. As years passed, I realized that this anxiety wasn't just a passing fear either, but it was grounded in the very reality of what we are doing to our planet. I still remember my weekly Florida Aquarium visits from when I was in preschool. I used to be glued to the glass, gazing at the fish and the vibrant coral, the colors so alive, it felt like stepping into a scene from The Little Mermaid, where every single branch of coral seemed to beam with life and schools of fish would swirl in a perfect dance. I would put my palms on the glass and trace the probably very scared and very confused fish. Fast forward about eight or nine years to my first dive trip to the Florida Keys. I was so excited to witness the same underwater world that I had growing up, but without a barrier of glass in between. However, as I descended into the depths, what I found was nothing like what I had imagined. The reef felt like a hollowed out city, abandoned and forgotten. The fish, were few and far between, and the corals were pale, bleached skeletons. They say that your first impression is your last impression. And in this case, my first impression of the underwater world was a lasting one. And it hit me hard. In that moment, I realized that we don't just see pictures like this in documentaries or on the news, but we see them in real life. This is happening in real time. I later learned that 98% of Florida's corals were dead or dying, decimated by human impact, pollution, and climate change. Most of you have probably experienced similar feelings to this after the wildfires in LA or Hurricane Milton hit Florida a couple months ago. The wildfires were devastating, causing over 40,000 acres in damages, forcing hundreds of thousands of families to evacuate and destroying hundreds of homes. And Hurricane Milton was no better. It caused over $50 billion in damages. And while the immediate impact of the storm was devastating in itself, it's the long-term psychological toll that people are still grappling with. It's the loss of jobs, homes, and the sense of stability. Climate change anxiety is a chronic stage of worry, 
centered around climate change. It both negatively impacts life function and creates future-oriented apprehension. But now, I'm not just here to talk to you about the problem. I want to offer a solution as well. And the answer might surprise you. It's not a pill. It's not a therapist. It's not Prozac or Lexapros. It's actually water therapy. According to the National Institute of Health, the best way to treat anxiety is behavior therapy through exposure to natural settings. Cognitive Behavior Therapy, or CBT, consists of three branches, stress inoculation training, psychoeducation, and biofeedback. Stress inoculation training gradually increases our exposure to anxiety-provoking situations. Psychoeducation is all about increasing our personal and interpersonal growth. And lastly, biofeedback increases our awareness and mindfulness to what we do and how we do it. And at this point, you're probably wondering, OK, that's great, but what does scuba diving have to do with any of this? Well, scuba diving actually combines all three branches of cognitive behavior therapy, and it's all about mindfulness. See, when you're underwater, you learn to control your breath, deepen it, and slow it down. It's all about being in tune with your body and environment and slowing down the chaos in your mind. Now, I'm a Nitrox rescue and advanced scuba diver and I have over 100 dives in my belt. And I can safely say that scuba diving has helped me with my anxiety. What actually started as a recreational activity has actually helped me turn it into a deeply meaningful mission to help restore the ocean's rainforests the coral reefs, because through scuba diving, I've been able to help restore and outplant over 500 corals in the Florida Keys. Scuba diving not only helped me confront my eco-anxiety head on, but actively helped me take part in the fight against climate change. So just like we learned to control our breathing and diving, we can learn to control our stress in everyday life. Even though not everyone here is inclined to or has the means to scuba dive, the mindfulness that is achieved through diving can be achieved through any immersive physical activity. So, we are the generation that decides whether the earth continues to burn or whether we will rise up and take part in the fight against climate change. Each one of us has the power to turn the seemingly insignificant anxiety into action, into advocacy, and into hope. We don't need to wait for the perfect solution because we are the solution. So the story of our burning earth and our dystopian future can be rewritten if we choose to do so. Thank you.